welcome to the Observers Direct, the show where we go meet our observers in person. This time we traveled to Israel to meet with our observer Anwar Suleiman. He fled fighting in Darfur to find refuge in Israel along with tens of thousands of other people from Sudan and Eritrea. Not one day I, I did something against the law, but after five years the government he took uh, from me this freedom. This is outside the section. Okay, this is my room. You can see. I mean, uh, Rega, I... Bechalot, bechalot. Hello, Goni. Hi, Anwar. Hi. Hi, how are you? So nice to nice meet you. Nice to meet you. Also, me too. Thanks. We meet Anwar Suleiman outside the Holot Detention Center. He's locked up there at night, but can leave during the day. Anwar was an activist back in Darfur. He fled Sudan when the government tried to arrest him. First, he went to Libya, then Egypt, and from there, smugglers got him over the border into Israel. Before I, I'm coming to Holot, uh, I... I uh, I have like five years um, lived inside Israel. I live in uh, Tel Aviv. My life is normal. It's, uh, I work like uh, nine hours in a day in some hotel. He, uh, some hotel he called David Intercontinental. And not one day I, I did something against the law. But after five years, the government he took uh, from me this freedom. Uh, I don't know why. Many of those detained at Holot have similar stories. They fled fighting in Sudan or forced labor in Eritrea. In the last decade, about 60,000 African migrants entered Israel. In 2012, the authorities cracked down and secured the border. As a signatory to the UN Refugee Convention, Israel couldn't deport the Sudanese or the Eritreans against their will. However, they started making their lives harder by sending many of them here to Holot. Prison authorities wouldn't let us film inside, but Anwar and his friends showed us images they recorded on their mobile phones. Okay, this is my room. You can see. Now this is my room. You can see this outside the section. All the section like this. Now we have like eight sections. 10 o'clock in the night, is, all this section is closed. This is the door also is closed. Yeah. Now we can go in outside. They have to sign. The people, you know, we don't do anything in a day. Just spend the day round from the big prison this without do anything. Anwar filed an asylum request in 2013, but he still hasn't heard back. A total of only four people have been granted official asylum. The rest are left in illegal limbo. Today is a special day at Holot. Dozens of Israeli activists have come to celebrate the Jewish holiday of Passover with the detainees, who are mainly Muslim. It's an honor to have you here celebrating Pesach in the middle of the desert with us. This is where people of Israel crossed when they left Egypt after God heard their cry. Today, we are in the desert again. Activists and detainees share the traditional matzah bread. Nearby, a group of men cook up some Sudanese specialties. A band from Tel Aviv provides music, and they've got some special guests, rappers from Holot. Uh, it is me calling for freedom. You, Holot, you will stop this just one. You just real prison surrounded by cops. You and the real deal, you need to take it back. They told me that this prison is five stars gone. Yeah, they are just sight now, spending my dignity. When the activists leave, the detainees will go back to spending their days roaming the desert or trying to hitch rides to the nearest city, Beersheba, 60 kilometers away. We head to South Tel Aviv, where thousands of Sudanese and Eritreans still live, waiting to see if they too will end up in detention. Technically, they're not allowed to work, but nearly all do, mostly in construction and cleaning. Soon, Anwar joins us. He's been granted a two-day pass out of Cholot. He wants to show us around his old neighborhood. This is the Anand Street. Uh, a lot of asylum seekers leave this area, this street, and also have uh, some small business, like you, you see, this a story. And can you explain how do you, uh, asylum seekers run businesses since they're not allowed to work in Israel? Uh, not allowed to work, but he runs the business by some other one have good paper, uh, like Israel. Okay, so they sublet the stores from Israelis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We walk over to Levinsky Park, where asylum seekers meet on the weekends to talk about their country's problems and their hopes for the future. The more artistically inclined meet at a colorful bomb shelter in the middle of the park, which doubles as a cultural center. Hi. Hi. 
Hi, how are you, brother? Also, me too, brother. Hi, brother. That's where Anwar's friends Habib and Moyasin practice their music. They're the artists who wrote the song Holot, which we heard others sing back in the desert. But much of their music focuses on Sudan, not Israel. It's all about how my people to come together, forget about where you come from, west or left or whatever. Let's be Sudanese people in first. And when that happens, you can return home. Of course, 100%. The reason why we are here because we don't need problem, we don't need fight. That's why we, we got us we got us from our country. So they, they have to understand that we are not coming to, to fight. We just came in, in peace, you know what I mean? So we included the number of guests because as you can Asylum see, seekers are also using their time in Israel to further their education. We teach the um, basic computer, uh, Microsoft, Microsoft Word, and the PowerPoint and the Excel. We're thinking when we get this knowledge and the skills, uh, when, you, when there is a peace and stability in Darfur, you can go back home and then you can be able to, uh, to help others. You know, I mean, it's like a long-term plan, plan. It's not like a short-term. I just wanted to ask, would anybody like to explain to us why you're taking this class? You know, I did computer before a long time ago mm -hmm. in my country, uh, yeah, but uh, it's not like uh, I need. But uh, myself, I need to know my information about computer because it's helped me definitely. I know it's helped me maybe in the future. But many asylum seekers are less than optimistic about their futures. Anwar takes us to meet his friends at a cafe run by Eritreans. Nagmeldin has been summoned to Holot. We have to go to Holot or to a third country, okay? So uh, they want to deport us. They don't care if I, for example, if I go to Uganda or a, a X place in somewhere, okay? They don't care what's going to happen for me in the future, okay? Would you consider going to a third country? For me, if, if uh, I have clear situation in the third country, I can go uh, tomorrow. Okay, I don't care, like, you know, uh, but the like, question is, like, you know, how I, ca how I can get the status in the third country, okay? So if, if you have, like, a clear agreement between Israel government and third country, okay, so I can go there and to stay there, okay? Nangmeldin has reasons to be weary. He fears he could face the same ordeal as this man, Sadiq El Sadiq. Last year, he was asked to choose between going to Holot or a third country somewhere in Africa. They didn't tell me that it's which country I'm supposed to go until I came to airport in Bangalore airport. I received a ticket that is uh, understood that I will, I'm going to go to Utopia. And when I got out of the airport, and they told me that it's, uh, uh, you don't have uh, a right to enter the country because your flight is coming from Israel. It's directly to, to Sudan, to Khartoum. Sadiq refused to get on the flight and spent nine days in the terminal where he slept on chairs. There, he had a chance encounter with an Israeli activist. She took this picture, where he holds his arms up in the refugee's symbol for freedom. Eventually, Ethiopian authorities forced him onto a flight back to Israel, where he ended up in Holot. His lawyer took his case to the Supreme Court and got Sadiq freed. So I think that Sadiq's case showed me how extreme and how radical uh, the Israeli government, and especially the Minister of Interior, can go to deport those people. The authorities claimed that Sadiq had agreed to go back to Sudan, but admitted they failed to get this in writing. In another part of South Tel Aviv, we met up with Jor Kahalani. Jor was one of the organizers of a string of anti-immigration rallies back in 2012. They've changed the whole face of this neighborhood. It's not the neighborhood I knew, the neighborhood where I grew up. Everything's different. What could they do with them? Well, they've got lots of fields. They could send them to work in the fields, in the kibbutzes, instead of throwing them in the middle of our city, on the back of the poor people. Israel is a Jewish country. The Jewish people don't have a lot of countries. They've got one, just one. We have to make sure to preserve this Jewish character. 
Jor says he has no interaction with his neighbors from Sudan and Eritrea. But he is curious about Anwar, so we join him back in Levinsky Park. Shalom. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm Dror. Anwar, I've been detained in Holot for nearly a year now. Wait, tell me something. Isn't Holot good for you? Don't they give you food? They give you food, right? And a bed? Tell me, yes or no, do you have a bed? Listen to me. Over there, we live in uncertainty. We have questions about how long we're going to stay there, and nobody gives us any answers. A man is not a bed. He's not food. He said, you are live in Cholot, you have a bed, you have a food. I, I tell him, the human not a bed, not a food. The human, first, the freedom. The freedom is very important for any human. Yeah, shalom. Okay. My deepest wish is for peace in your country so that you can go back to your home, to your family. I hope it happens quickly and that there's peace for everyone. That's the solution for us all. Yes, I agree with you. Thank you for this. Thank you. Another thing Anwar and Jor seem to agree on, though for different reasons, is that the authorities are not listening to them. The country's immigration authority declined our interview requests. However, the authorities have recently started giving mandatory departure notices to those who've had their asylum requests refused, telling them that they'll be sent somewhere in Africa. Talks have been reported with Uganda and Rwanda. Meanwhile, Anwar has returned to Holot. He has no idea when he'll be set free, nor where he'll end up. Now, if there's a problem in your community that you think the world needs to know about, 